Hello everyone and welcome for the next 20 minutes or so we're going to talk a bit about tombstone management. We'll show you how it works, we'll give you some benefits, and we'll set up a quick part and kind of give you some ideas of what tombstone management can do for you and your company. Okay. A couple of quick uh, housekeeping. Uh, I'm Steve. I'll be the presenter today. I am Senior Applications uh, with Gibbs. Feel free to ask as many questions as you might have. For the questions we can't get to, we will get to them after the session. Um, we promise we will get back to you, so not to worry. So ask questions throughout. Okay, Tombstone Management. Tombstone Management really designed to program a single part and then move that part of processes around a tombstone um, easily. Okay, so in this case, what we don't want to do is we don't want to program every one of these parts. Okay, so we have nine parts on the side times four, do the math. You really don't want to program each one of those parts. It doesn't make any sense. However, if we were able to program just one part of it, one single part, and be able to take those operations and move them around the tombstone easily and be able to manipulate them so that you can get what you need um, efficiently. That's really what you want to do. Okay. So in this picture here, you see um, we have equal, equal parts. They're all the same part, equally spaced around a tombstone. And that's the simplest form of, of doing tombstone management. You can also put, in this case, even though these are the same part, they're spaced differently. Okay, so you can have staggered spacing on your stocks or your parts. You can actually have different parts on different parts of the tombstone. Okay, so you can have, you know, um, side A on one side, side B on another side, and we can easily manipulate that. And I'll give you some idea of how that works as we move on. And again, the idea here is to do very simple things, okay? Let's program one part and move it around 100 times if we needed to do that, okay? And that's, that's really the goal here in, in Tombstone Management, okay? So with that said, let's go off and let's have a look at um, something that we might want to program here. Okay, so here's my part. And you saw this in the first picture. And this is the one we're going to do. Okay. Now there's a couple of prerequisite things that we really need to do here. And one of those prerequisites is kind of knowing the layout of how you want your part on the tombstone. Okay. Now this is a simple one because we only have four sides. But you could have eight sides, 12 sides. doesn't really matter to us. So what I've done here is just created a simple layout for visualization only. I'm not going to use this geometry to cut the part. I'm going to use the solid. But I want to lay it out so that you can see what it's actually going to look like. And this may be a good way for you to go in and lay it out and say, okay, these are going to fit uh, this many across, this, this many in X and this many in Y. Um, you might need to know that. I mean, you may already know the positions, but maybe not. Or maybe you're just trying to set something up to see, hey, can this work here? Can, this, can we do this a little bit better there? Again, this is just for um, a layout purpose. The other thing I, would, I did here is throw in some dimensions just so that I knew, know and knew where everything goes. Okay? So that they're two and three quarters apart and seven inches high. Um, I'm going to need to know that when I set up my stock, my fixtures, um, and my tool paths to make sure that everything goes in the right location. So again, this here is just for layout purposes. That's all. Gives me some idea of what I can do. And is that going to work? Yep. And we're good to go with that. So the next thing I want to do is uh, let's go off. Let's just create uh, a, a little bit of tool path here. So I'll open up my tools and my cam. 
And um, I like to use the feature tool, so I'm going to use uh, the AFR to get my hole there. Um, I'm going to bring down my drill and holes naturally and we're going to do um, from the whole feature so i'll select the whole feature and from the whole feature we're going to set this to be incremental we'll set this to same r level we want to start the top of the hole bottom of the hole i'm not going to adjust anything through i will however switch the machining cs from the whole feature and this is a little trick that if you use the whole manager you probably want to switch this on all the time this way you don't have to worry about, am I on the right CS? <clears throat> okay, this, this will take care of all that for you. Um, I like to go a little bit higher on my retracts, and that should be good enough. We'll say do it, and create our tool path. Next thing, let's go off and let's create a uh, tool path on the outside of the part here and I'm just going to use a, a contour pass here and in this case I'm going to set it to the machining cordon system now I have two cordon systems here right I have the main cordon system which is the XY plane or the center rotation I could use that if I want to or I created a cordon system on the face of the part or you can create a cordon system anywhere on the part and machine from there. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, perfect. So now we do a contour on this. I'll reset this to be absolute. And I want to start at uh, point 0.1, 0. I'm going to pick the bottom of the stone. Just because typically you have it offset, you'd have some fixture, but for our purpose, it's good enough. Um, <clears throat> Hundred thou, I'm good with that. And uh, what I'm going to use is the uh, profiler. Zoom down here a little bit. Pick right here. Good enough. I'll say do it. And uh, now I have my tool pad. Okay, so I've created a, a, a drilling and then a, just a simple contour. All right. Now, the next thing I need to do is build some stock around this uh, part here. Let me switch all the stuff off. I'm going to build stock around this part. Um, if you haven't done anything yet uh, with macros, you probably should look into it. Um, we're replacing them up on the web so you can download some of these. And I'm going to use something I call the stock builder that we built here. Basically, it builds a piece of stock around this solid. So I'm going to say yes, I want that, and I'm just going to put 50 grand around it, and it builds the stock around the part. Okay, and you can do Z too, I, I'm just not doing it. If we look at this in the op sim now, we can see that we have one part, and this is how we would machine it, right? And I'm happy with that. Now, if I didn't have tombstone management, I would have to program each one of these all the way up, however I wanted them, on all the sides. And I really don't want to do that. So what I want to do is use Tombstone Management to set the stock and to set the part. So I'm going to open up the document dialog and go to a tab here called Multi-Part. We'll click on that and here we have a pull down and it says TMS. Okay, so right away you see this red X. What this means is that TMS senses that hey we have some operations but uh, we haven't really set up TMS yet or something has changed once you set it up you move a tool or you do something different it senses the fact that something's changed and it wants you to go back and look and make sure that everything is up to date and everything is okay and that's really all that means okay so the first thing I want to do is set up the stock so I'm going to pick the stock here and we'll set up the stock and fixtures and here's where I would set it up, okay? So I would set up the count in X. So how many do I want in X? How many do I want in Y? And how many sides do I have on, this, on the tombstone, okay? So in this case, we're going to do 3 and 3. 
and we have four sides. Again, you can have eight sides, ten sides, two sides, it doesn't really matter. The step in X is how many in X are we going to have? And what's the distance in between them? The step in Y is the same. What's the distance in between? And then the rotation, in this case, 90 degrees. Okay, if you had eight sides, it'd be a different angle, right? You can do the math. And we can start at any position we want. In this case, we're all going to start at zero, and, and I'm okay with that. So if I set this... What you're going to see is these yellow boxes, which represent the stock that TMS just set up. So these are the stock bodies that it's set up. You don't have to do anything. It takes care of it for you. Okay, perfect. Now what we have to set up is for the operations or for the part. So we'll set up the TMS. And here we need to lay out... Again, we need to lay out where the parts are going to be. Okay, so 3 and X, 3 and Y, 4 sides. Now you might say, why didn't we just use the information from the stock? Because the stock may be different than the layout of how you want to machine the actual parts. You may have custom sides. So even though the stock is correct, you may, may be machining on different parts of the side of the part. Okay? or different sides of the stone, or, or, or. So it doesn't really translate well back into the, um, into, into this dialogue. Now, in this case, it's the same because they're all linear. But still, we need to be able to make sure that we have the option of being able to set whatever side we want, okay? Um, I'm going to set this to X first, so it does all the X moves first. And I'm just going to do one way. We're going to come back and change it so that you can see the difference. Standard part layout. We're not going to do any custom sides. I'm going to group everything together by tool. It needs to be grouped together so that this tool does that. And you can have the same tool in multiple groups to do different things. Same uh, retracts. I'm going to retract a little bit farther out. Again, my preference uh, on a new B, which means if it's going to rotate, we want to be sure we're far enough out when we rotate so we don't clip the stone or clip the parts with the tools. Different ways to output. So you can have, you know, different ways, sub, subs output, different ways you want the cycles to be output. Um, and do you want rotary or linear output? You can minimize work offsets. You can set the work offsets on the same faces you can shift them you can there's all these different things you can do um and and tombstone management the other thing it has here is this little page called info and in the info you can you know pick different things that you want to see and when you run this it will give you hey we have two cs's per part we have the main cs and then the work uh the machining cs that we have there's 36 parts. You certainly don't want to be programming 36 of these. And the number of offsets. And again, there's offsets for everything. So you can, again, minimize the amount of offsets. You can do, you know, all sorts of different things there. So, okay. And that's it. So if we close this, and let's, uh, let's bring this down here. I'm going to go to machine sim and I'm actually going to load a machine because uh, it looks cooler okay get a good look at it here we'll slow this down it's going to go really fast and so we're going to come in and we're going to machine along X one way which means it starts here and you can see that it's going that same direction every time and this might be okay for you. I mean, you might go, yeah, that's the way we machine our parts. It's the only way we can machine our parts. This is what we need to do. Um, and I'm happy with that. And in fact, at this point, we would be done. Because it's going to go through all the sides, switch tools, and it's going to do the same thing as it machines the, the parts all the way around. 
You might say, well, gee whiz, that's not really what I want to do. What I really want to do is I want to go in here and I want to go along Y. And I want it to zigzag, which means it's going to go back and forth. And on the rotation, it's going to stay in a position. And it's not going to go all the way back to the beginning. So just by switching that, we're going to see that we're going to go zigzag. And it's going to do the same thing. So just by making a couple of changes, we can affect how the machine runs, how your parts run. It might be, uh, this might be better for whatever reason, tool change reasons, or um, I don't know, pick something. Um, maybe the operator likes to run them better this way. I don't know the answer. But giving you the option to make a bunch of changes um, to get all the things that you need. And again, you can go back, just like in all things Gibbs, you can go back, you can make changes to the processes and do all sorts of things and not really affect the setup in TMS. Okay, so that's a really simple part. Um, but this is really what it's designed for. Okay, doing parts like this. Now, with that said, let's open up uh, another part here just to have a quick look. So here's a pretty nice part. We have all the process. I'm not going to go through building all the processes again. And in this part here, this is the stock. Well, let's put the part away. And that would be the stock that we want to use. Okay. And the interesting thing here is I've created, again, for visual visualization, this is the layout that I want. So you'll notice that they're staggered because we can't fit in between. You know, if we lay them um, evenly, the tools that I need to use won't fit. Okay, so this is the stock that I want. So I need to build the stock staggered. And this is the other nice thing that TMS allows us to do is to do multiple sides and change things as we need. So in this case, I'm gonna set up the stock and the fixtures. Now, if we leave this the way we had it and we set it, See, we get three and three, and that's really not what we want. What we really want is to, we want them staggered, okay? So that's not what we want. So let's go in here. We're going to set custom sides, all right? And in custom sides here, I can set, again, the count in X, the count in Y, and the, the, the amount of sides that I have, okay? So... The step in X is zero because we're not making anything in zero. We're not moving it in zero, but we are in Y. So the distance between is six inches. And we're going to start at zero. So it's going to stay here. And the rotation position is zero. Okay, so that's good. Now, on the second side, which is over here, B minus 90, we're still going to do one in X, two. Um, we're still going to do six inches apart. But in this case, we're going to start three inches above this one. Okay. Then on side three, it's going to be the same as side one, right? Except it's going to be 180 degrees. And then on side four, it's going to be the same as minus 90. We're going to start at six, but we're going to move, move everything up three inches. Okay. So if I set that, then you're going to see that we are able to stagger the stock around because the tools, again, the tools that I use to get in here to machine on this face don't fit if they were right up against each other or right in line with each other, I should say. Now, in the TMS here, if we look at this really quick, this is much different. Okay, there's a lot more things going on here. Here we have 12 sides. They're all a little bit different, okay? So four, four, and four, they're all just a little bit different because I need to do different things. I need to machine here, and I need to machine here, and I need to machine there, and I want to be able to control that. So we can do unlimited sides. Um, I, I shouldn't say unlimited, 99, which if you are using 99 sides, it's pretty complex. We group all the tools together. Here you can see they're in some sort of a list. So I want seven, eight, and nine to run 
the same um, process around. Um, you'll see down here now we have some operation layouts. And what does that mean? Well, we'll just look at this really quick. And basically what this said is these operations only want to run on these sides. So I can basically set up a side and say, I want to run the tools only on this particular side. And that's what custom sides does for us. And if we look at this in the sim, see we have some form tool coming down, putting in the the form on the end of that part. I'll speed this up a little. Drilling the holes. And again, this could be just the way that someone likes to do it. Okay. Could be a tool change thing. Could be, hey, I need to do this. In some cases, you need to be worried about does the tool fit in the tool changer in the right spots and, you know, all, all sorts of weird, weird things like that. Okay. Well, that's a, an overview of tombstone management. Again, being able to do a lot of manipulating on the tombstones and putting your parts wherever you need to put them.